Good Thursday night. I am Tabo Mkhuli and thank you for joining us tonight here on In Focus. Let's begin here. Now frustration is mounting as families uh, wait uh, for news after their loved ones uh, who are trapped under the rubble of a building which collapsed in George on Monday. Search teams continue to sift through the debris to locate uh, more than 40 of the 81 workers who were on uh, the construction site with the disaster occurring. Now, eight people died and 16 others are in critical condition in hospital. News of Africa's Karinda Jack Mohan is live for us there uh, tonight on the scene. Karinda, good to have you this evening. and Thank you very much uh, for coming on. Uh, of course, the police are now more and more taking over that scene and continuing with, with investigations. What are we learning? Yeah, those are critical investigations. At the same time, heavy machinery is on its way. In fact, uh, just about an hour ago, the George local municipality said that they're not changing the uh, numbers. So they still say that the death toll is at eight. 81 people were at that site. And of that, they go on to say that uh, 37 patients were retrieved. Um, and currently 16 are critical, six are have facing life-threatening injuries and seven minor injuries. Those are the survivors, but the death toll is eight. However, you spoke about the fears and frustration, and right now, so in the distance you can see the construction site, um, and they're waiting for that heavy machinery. Uh, I'll give you an update on that. They say that there are two five-ton excavators on its way, three 20-ton excavators with hammers and buckets, and three cube front end loaders, as well as more trucks for excavation. So that's the machinery coming, right? But what is frustrating residents and families, people that are waiting for loved ones, is that they don't know um, where their family members are, which category they fall in, have they survived, have they passed away, or are they still beneath the rubble? Are they still are they still part of the 44 missing? So many family members who are in the community hall, those are immediate family members, but those who are searching for their friends, uh, their, uh, their, their, their loved ones as well, um, some of their employees are asking questions. Bulelo, thank you for speaking to me. And you are among those that are extremely frustrated because you say there's no transparency with regards to what's happening. Ma'am, there's no transparency at all. Because at the same time, you can see we are, we are, a lot of people, we are standing here, but we don't get any updates, we don't get any information. But the only update that we are receiving is how many people that are dying. That's not what we want. We are coming here, we, we are praying, we are crying with families that have got people inside there. The only thing that we want and we need is the update so that we can keep on praying. We can keep on supporting those people who are losing hope. I was just standing with a brother who said he, his brother is also stuck there. And now he's starting to lose hope, hope. Because what you can see now, the situation is quiet as if there's a celebrity here. What you see is only a lot of meetings, but we don't see the actual work. So that at the end of the day, we can all see something is happening. We are not here only to see uh, or to come and waste time here because there are people, there are brothers there, there are our sisters, there are our family members. But at the same time, we don't get any respect by means of his, uh, information. You want someone to come and address you, basically? People must come and address us and tell us what is their plan of action, mm. what they are doing now, mm. and what is going on now, so that we can know what is happening there. Um, so, you know, I, I understand that there are many here that are also waiting for their friends, perhaps not part of going to the community hall, but just tell me about the agony that they are going through. Man, it's, it, it's painful. Yeah. And at, at the same time, what you need to understand yeah. now, now this thing doesn't affect only the families. It affects everyone. Yeah. It affects everyone. Even ourselves now, I was coming from work, but we decided, no, I, we can't watch TV. We can't sit in our houses. We need to come here. Just imagine if I don't have a brother which is stuck there, but the pain that I'm feeling, what about somebody who have a child there? What about somebody who have a brother there? What about somebody who have a friend there? So the situation there is very sad. It's painful. You can see. We don't know even how to comfort those people there because it's very sad because you will say it, it's fine it's fine it's going to be fine but you you know for the fact that you said something that you don't even show about that so what we're asking for let whoever 
have information better than us to come and inform us so that we can know what to tell those people, to give those people hope, to pray for, uh, together with those people. It's what we are looking for. It's what we are begging for. You understand? Come speak to the public. I do understand your message. Thank you for speaking to us, uh, Mr. Mbulelo Ongo. Uh, I'm not sure if we can maybe just get some more voices perhaps as we go along here, but what he's just trying to reflect is that for hours on end, community members are waiting behind this barricade. They can't get closer. It is a matter of safety, but as they wait here, they're craning their necks to just try and see what's happening so they can also get answers, so they can know what is the process, because right now in their town, they know 44 people are stuck beneath rubble and they just also want some answers. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get any, any more comments at this stage, but um, I just want to take you back there and maybe also just play you uh, a bite from a volunteer who was here. So with regards to what is happening now, currently they're waiting for that heavy machinery. It's going to take a long time to come. We understand it might arrive here at 2 o'clock in the morning, but it's that heavy machinery that is needed to start moving the concrete slabs. And what has happened is, remember, this is a five-story building that caved in, going down into the basement to the foundation. So those that were trapped on the first level have tons of rubble above them. It takes hours to dig through this rubble. For about two days now, there's been a, a, mass, a massive drill that's been really trying to drill through the slabs and create just a smaller stones that is now being removed by excavators, even removed by hand. And it, is, it takes hours to do that, to just break one slab. But also as they do this, the structure is not strong. It continues to cave in. So at some point then, rescuers have to remove themselves for their own safety, just step back until they can understand how to approach the situation. So that, what happens, that is what happens when it becomes quiet like this. Um, we'll just try and show you some of it here, but basically at this point now they say we need to wait for that heavy machinery that's coming. It's going to come on flatbed trucks uh, at, uh, through uh, uh, the Western Cape basically down here to George. Uh, and as that happens, now they have to, re to arrange how they're going to get that machinery through the small Victoria Street here in George to the site. And then they're going to have to rezone the site. They're going to have to further cordon off. Tomorrow morning, I don't know if we'll be able to give you the same vantage point because we might be moved back considering this machinery will start trying to excavate the entire uh, massive slabs of concrete that cannot be broken down. That's just some of the process that is being told to us by some of the volunteers here. But I'd like you to take a listen to one volunteer. He's a local George resident who has been here for the past uh, three days at least, removing stones. He's got some injuries himself. But this was his message when I asked him, what does he want to say to those that are watching from their homes, just feeling the pain that is felt here on the ground? Take a listen. Look, it's a sad situation, honestly, but once we, we, we retrieve a body, for me it's a celebration because there are families out there at the main hall who are waiting to hear from us or from the main, from the, from the, from the main guys. Now once one body has been, has been recovered, it's a celebration because that one family can have a closure. But as much as it's not, it's not that easy, but at least there's a close of going forward. Uh, they must keep on praying. Look, I was telling the other guy now, you know, God will do a miracle. You will get survivors. I, as you look at the situation, it's bad. But I believe that there are still uh, people out there who are still alive. I've got that hope. So there you hear Andile Elengo speaking about just a message of prayer. Now before uh, I hand back to you, I must tell you, there's just even lots happening around George because just now I think we saw what might be a high-speed chase of a police car chasing one vehicle there and the community turning around. But um, what the community says that's behind this barricade that's been here for hours now, they say that they want answers. They want someone to come and address them as the George community. And this is quite specific because for the past Last three days, we've been hearing how this particular community, it's, it's quite a small town, says that they do come together in time of crisis. In this case, many have come together. Many people have come to this barricade, stopped here, offered some prayer, offered some songs, some, uh, a choir has come here, but they all came just to 
to provide something to support the teams here and what they want in return is just some answers of well how long is this going to go on for how long are we going to see this tragedy unfold here and what more can we do to help but their frustration of course is uh, felt more so by the frustration of families who are spending yet another night not knowing whether their loved ones are among the 29 survivors among the eight who have passed away or among the 44 still stuck beneath the rubble. So that pain is really, really uh, traumatic for the families. Many are still in this community hall. Some go home to freshen up and come here early in the morning and just stay here for some warmth. Um, but they're left without answers. So Mbulelo's words about frustration is something that I think many of the families feel very strongly. Um, earlier on, a Western Cape official told us it is ultimately a weight that we have to go through because of the process that must be undertaken, because of the hours it takes to dig through this rubble in terms of just doing it safely, in terms of how precarious this building is. And that is what is happening. And then after that, it's going to be the identification process where families then will be called in to see the bodies, to identify if this is their loved ones. And then the process continues. In the meanwhile, because as we wrap right now, what is critical is to see the investigation ongoing. I think this is something that the local community wants to hear about as well, along with the rest of the country, is that where are those who are supposed to be held responsible? According to the Department of Labor and Employment earlier today, we were told that they approached the address of the owner of this property. They weren't there. They then issued subpoenas, no response yet. But now this is ultimately a criminal case that we expect to unfold in courts. But that's only when we see arrests. That's only when we can track down those who are supposed to be held responsible. More questions are being raised about the certification of safety. Who said that this building was safe when 81 people entered on Monday morning and ultimately only 29 left alive? died. Um, so that is the case as it stands now. Tomorrow morning, my colleague Sipa Kema will be on the ground at 6 a.m. giving you a live update. And I hope at that time you'll see that heavy, the, 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 the much bigger machinery that's supposed to be here. And I think the site might change. And perhaps maybe officials that are viewing these updates realize that maybe there needs to just be a bit more communication in terms of what's happening. Because the, the statistics being given out by officials has been the same for the past day. So no one knows really what progress has been made, although we can see that they are trying. Really at this point, many people just want to know, okay, where are we now? What's the plan? What's the plan going forward so we can start actually see some progress and, and work on then the process to get justice? So that's really a wrap of, uh, of today, of tonight, uh, from us on the ground. But we will keep on the story. My colleague Sipa Kema will be here early tomorrow, so please stay with us. Karina Jack Mohan, thank you tonight. Live for us there in George outside that uh, collapse building. Well